Hello everyone in our today's video, we are going to create this countdown timer. And we are also going to add time start and end events in it. I set up the simple scene here. And some sprite images just to make the timer feel more interesting. So let's first create a canvas. Inside our canvas, create a panel and change its color. Let us now create an image object as its child. Now, in its source image field, drag our clock sprite. Let's make another image its child, just like before. And then select this circle image, change its image type to fill. As you can see now, there is a slider that appears. If we change its value, you can see we have a circle slider effect. Next, let's make a text mesh pro text and modify its color and other properties to suit your needs. Next, let's create three buttons to start, stop, and restart our countdown timer. That's it for the visual setup. Now let's jump into the coding section. First, let's create a script. Give it a name like timer. To begin, create a variable to hold the text reference of type text mesh pro text. To get the slider image reference, create a variable of type image. Then create two variables, one of type float to hold out time in seconds and one of type boolean to start and stop the timer. Now let's create three public methods for our buttons. Start timer, stop timer, and restart timer. In the start timer method, set the initial time to 60 seconds and set text to that time. Then set the timer to true. Now in the update method, if the timer is not on, we don't want to do timer stuff. Here, if time is greater than zero, then decrement it by time.delta time and then update our text. Now, open Unity and drag our script onto the clock object. Drag our text to text field. And the slider image into the slider field. Now select the start button and then click here to add a method. Drag the game object to which the timer script is attached. Select our script from the drop down menu and then select the start timer method here. Make sure to make the start timer method public, otherwise that method will not appear here. Now hit play. You can see our timer is working fine, but the number is showing in decimal form. Let's go to script. Here just convert the float value to int using mathf.seal method. Now you can see our timer is working fine. Next, let's move our start timer code into the restart timer method. If the timer is not turned on, set it to true in the start timer method. And in the pause method, if the timer is enabled, set it to false. Now, let's make a float variable called multiplier factor and another variable to get the time limit of our timer. Make it public so we can change it from the inspector. Let's divide one by the time limit in the start method because the slider value changes from zero to one. So we need to divide our total time by one so we can get a multiplier factor to multiply it by our time progress. Now, in the update method, let's update the fill amount of the slider image with our time by multiplying the current time by multiplier factor. Let's initialize everything once in the start method. Now let's attach our pause and restart time methods to their respective buttons. Now let's see how it works. I forget to reset sliders value in restart method, so let's do it first. I also forgot to set time to time limit do that as well.
Now in our script, let's create a public variable of type boolean with the name in minutes. In our update method, just before updating the text, check if the in minutes variable is not true, then update it normally. But if in minutes is true, then in this else block, let's create a time span variable. Let's create a time span from our current time and convert it into minutes and seconds. Do the same in the restart timer method and start method as well. Now let's see. Our timer is working fine now. Now let's see how we can make it reusable. Open our script and create two public Unity events, on start and on end. Just call it in the restart timer method and in the update when time ends. Now in the inspector, you can see we have two event listers. I'm writing another script to show how to use events in fast forward. Here are two methods for changing the image's color. Let's create an image as light and attach the light script to it. Now in our timer script, just select add listeners in both callbacks. Yup, you can see our events are also working fine. If we start timer, the color turns to green and if time ends, color turns red. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our channel for more excellent content like this and please tell your friends about it as well. See you in the next video. Stay happy.